The first lost opportunity came late in the first quarter, with West Virginia leading 14 to nothing. West Virginia's a good football team. They stopped us. I'll never believe it as long as I live that they stopped us inside the one-yard line twice. The second goal line stand occurred late third quarter, with the Mountaineers leading 27 to 10. He tried to run a seal option, which is an option with Flutie, after the fact they were pinching, and they played it very well. BC completed the hat trick of lost opportunity late in the ball game, trailing 27-17. A Doug Flutie pass to a wide open Scott Gieselman was just too short. Can't second guess, you know, Doug did the best he could, and, and I did the best we could, and we just, you know, it was great play by number eight there. You know, he, he had a super play on defense. The mere fact BC created these opportunities is truly a tribute to their courage, for they fell behind early 14-0 before the tailgaters could finish their hot dogs. On the first play of the game, Troy Stratford was popped. He fumbled. He never came back. A bad knee. And the Mountaineers quickly cashed in. But just minutes later, the most devastating play of the game. Some Mountaineer sleight of hand. A fake punt by Wolfley. And he was off to the races. And the Mounties led by two. From that point on, the Eagles had to play your basic catch-up football. And although the dashing flutie was absolutely spectacular, the three missed opportunities would cost the Eagles the ball game. Meanwhile, West Virginia quarterback Jeff Hostel zone, a larger flutie, as his escapism allowed the West Virginians to build up a safe and comfortable second half lead. I think we're a real good ball club. I think we're a ball club too, you know, it was a hell of a game. It was. For BC, an afternoon of might have been's. For West Virginia, a day of making the plays when they had to. The final, Mounties 27, Eagles 17. I might have been thinking lynching after a dismally played first half. Doug Flutie's running, not his passing, that stake the Eagles to a 10-0 lead. In fact, the first half statistics were completed only 16 balls. Yeah, I had a shaky first half. I really wasn't throwing the ball. I thought I was throwing the ball a lot better than last week, but the ball was riding high on me. I was overthrowing people. So the versatile Eagle offense shifted gears, giving the football to slippery tailback Troy Stratford, who ran for 104 first half yards en route to the Amelia Award as the game's MVP. While the offense sputtered, the defense obliterated Muldoon in the Crusader offense with helmet popping efficiency. Picked off four of Muldoon's first half passes, two by Todd Russell, one that choked only first half across. You know, that's what I make hard hits and make them turn the ball over and uh, play hard and, and I'm glad we were able to play as hard as we were. But in the second half, the Eagles did everything they wanted to do. The first four possessions in the half, the only thing they couldn't do, kick extra points. The players that we have that are key players for us were not able to play today. Uh, we can't have uh, a penalty of uh, Galloway out of our lineup and as, as we would like to be. An appetizer for Liberty after the game.
I think that did turn some things around. Uh, you know, we were moving the ball in the first half. We just couldn't get the ball in the end zone. So with less than a minute to play, the comeback that seemed so impossible just minutes ago is just seconds away from reality here at college, much to the delight of Jack McNell and his Eagles. Kel, be more... Watch it again here. You'll see Strahan coming from the left side of the screen. He's going to tuck that ball away right up over the top. There he goes. He wants that touchdown. No power at all. We just got together in the, in the, in the halftime in the locker room and said, hey, we're running the ball. Sometimes we, don't, we mix up the run and then we pass and we don't come, back, we don't come through with it, but we just decided to punch it down their throats. And it was just a regular naked play and I guess they, they, hadn't, they had never seen that kind of naked done before and I was just, I was wide open. There was no one within 10 yards of me, I think. I mean, it was an outstanding season for us, and it's something we'll treasure for the rest of our lives. And a win over Alabama is unbelievable. As the Eagles beat Penn State today for the first time ever, and by doing so, position themselves for a major bowl in Big? Oh, the people knew how big this game was. Hi, Mom. Good I'm morning. not studying today, <laughs> like I promised. What station are we going to be at? Right Go on, stop the <laughs> The players, they knew how big this game was. No more second chances, no more. This is the only one. This is for the beast of the east. Not get hyper, we got plenty of time. Good memory. Remember what it felt after that West Virginia game? Remember how, that, how bad it felt? The Let's go!
First possession, Doug Flutie to Brian Brennan. Second quarter, again to Brennan. This time, a miraculous ricochet to Troy Stratford. 14-0. Late second quarter, Steve Strahan. 21-0. As for the Eagle defense... But be alert, if we're moving the 80 defense, and they snap the ball, the BC bubble finally burst late in the first half when sensation DJ Dozier beat a blitz on a draw play 21-7 a late exchange of field goals, 24-10 at the break. A late Penn State touchdown lead to seven points, and the Eagles needed a spectacular play to bail out of a hole. They got one from Gerard Phelan. I got off the ball, and the guy jammed me a touch, and uh, fortunately I got around him and got by him. And when I turned to look, it was up in the air, and all I had to do was go and run under it. And uh, I was there, and, and I had a shot at it, and I came up with it, fortunately which set up the insurance field goal off the toe of the much maligned Kevin Snow. What's bigger, getting married, having your first child, or beating Penn State? All three of them are pretty big, but I tell you, I couldn't be happier. Our kids played like heck. We didn't go into a shell and say, hey, we got to hold on to win. We said, let's just come out and get after them. That's what we did. Who do you think should be the number one team in the East as of now? Well, I would guess it has to be BC. I really hadn't given them much thought <laughs> up until, I mean, but I would guess I, they beat us, and I would think. Well, Paterno just told me he thinks BC is the best team in the East. Well, I tend to agree with him, but you can't come out and say that. But I just said. Uh...